In this video, I'd like to cover two more question types, and that's going to be the fill in the blank and the fill in the multiple blanks. So we're still in our practice quiz. If uh, you've been following along, then you know uh, naming the question specifically is important, although I'm breaking that rule as I just name it the next question in the sequence. Um, in our previous videos, we talked about quiz options, how to add a multiple choice question, and then how to add file upload questions, one being the actual file upload choice, and then using an essay question for students to upload from the Google Drive. So in this video, we're gonna talk specifically about the fill in the blank. Watching previously, you noticed that I went to the teacher view after uh, my fake student completed her quiz. And you noticed that because it was a, an essay question or a file upload question, that those were noted at the top, that those were things I needed to take care of. Those were ones that I needed to quote hand grade. The fill in the blank will not show you that you need to go check them but I highly recommend that you do. Because when you have a fill in the blank question, if a student misspells a word, if they add units of measure after a number, but that's not how you noted the possible answer, if there's any variation in these four possible answer choices that you've provided, then it's going to count it wrong. So even if I put in a fill in the blank question, I don't leave it alone, I do go back and check every single one in case uh, a student just mistyped something and it counted it wrong. So I do avoid fill in the blank for that reason, but sometimes we need them. We need them to fill in an answer and not just always a multiple choice kind of quiz or test. So here I would add the question. Um, let's see. Um, just, we'll do a math example. Oh, goodness, solve for x. So again, I'm going to use that math equation editor. And we'll type something simple. And then we'll insert that equation. And again, previously in the multiple choice type questions, I showed you this and it comes in as a picture and you can drag that to make it just a little bit larger. So if I'm wanting them to solve for X, so here are the potential things kids are going to put in. X equals five. Okay, that would be a correct answer, <clears throat> but there are already three variations to this type of answer. X space equals five, X equals space five, X space, you know, you understand what I mean. So you can give them a prompt in the question itself to say x equals blank you know maybe a note that says please type number only something of that sort but again kids are going to type in whatever they type in it may not match what you have provided so you might put that there you might just put the five um, and then, you know, because I am going to go back and grade this individually, I don't try to come up with every possible answer that students are going to fill in. So I can go ahead and update the question with two versions and then know that I've got to go back. So the fill in multiple blanks is similar. It's still going to be needed. Um, you're going to need to look at it after the kids have submitted their quiz. But here's how this one works. Um, you'll notice that it gives you some code or syntax on how you're going to actually enter this in. So here's how it works. Uh, the answer one jumped, oh my goodness, jumped over the, nope, answer So my blanks 
are not just something that I've underscored or something that I've left for them to fill in on the question itself, I actually need to put a variable in which that value is going to be held. So the blank jumped over the blank. So I've got answers here. For answer one, I'm going to type cow, but this is also going to be one of those issues where you're going to have to look at this because we can't possibly come up with every answer that students are going to type in. This one a little bit simpler because there really is just one answer, but maybe the kid, the student types in a capital C, you know, it's still right. Um, unless you're teaching English and, you know, capital C is not quite correct. So that's for answer one. I'm going to click the drop down to put in the answer for the second blank. So the cow jumped over the moon. And so I've got both of those handled and then I'm going to update that question. Now it looks strange from your view, but on the student view, they're going to see a blank in which they can type in right on that question. So again, in summary, they're good questions to use, question types, but you are going to have to go back and check those. So let me do one more of the multiple, fill in the multiple blanks so that you're getting an idea. And I didn't even name that one correctly, but we're gonna go again. Um, <clears throat> is the color of the sky. How many feet? are in a yard. So I've, I've added these two questions, but I want to fill in multiple blanks. So again, I'm going to put that bracket and put in answer one again and answer two. Then I would be left again to just fill in what that answer would be and another possible answer, capital B, answer to the same thing. So you could start thinking about how you could use the fill in multiple blanks so that you're not putting in so many questions in your quiz. You could really um, cut to the chase in one of these kinds of questions. So that's fill in the blanks. Again, you're gonna have to check those and in the next video, I'll talk more about a, another question type.